Welcome back to the school cast in my humble abode. This is my back garden. Calisthenics boudoir. <laughs> and challenge shoes, yeah. challenge, what am I on about? Q&A number... Six? Yes. Well done, Tim. That, the first, that was the yeah. first question. <laughs> Crikey, I was pressured. That was it there, so that's question number one. Yeah. Um, I, I'm looking, I'm just going to, something I've been reflecting on for, oh, okay. for the Q&As recently is one of my favourite parts of these is Dave practising the pronunciation. No, you already said this last oh, time. Did I say it already? No, yeah, in the last one. But yeah, but it's, it's happened again. I'm looking again. forward to again today, yeah, because you don't rehearse it. <laughs> well, a little, it goes a little bit. Well, I just asked you about this bit. Anyway, we will kick things off. Or oh, if you haven't clicked subscribe, make sure you do that so you don't miss out. And if you've got any questions, bang them in the comments below so that we can get answering them. Now, um, Tim's, Tim's developed a friend now on, uh, on YouTube. I don't know if he, he and, probably didn't think we're friends. <laughs> like, That's, this and, is um, awkward. We've said before that the one surefire way to get your question answered is some sort of compliment um, beforehand about how great the video was or how much you liked Tim's hair or something, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, or it can be something like you pepper us constantly <laughs> until yeah. we will answer your question. So um, apologies for having not done this before, but Dai uh, Sabizes, Clash of Clans, Clash fan. of Clans, he, um, for the umpteenth time, <laughs> that's right so uh, he says school of calisthenics so here it is once again is it better it's actually a good decent question to be fair is it better to have a certain variety uh, which means doing one day with the rings and the other day with normal bars and lots of different moves and exercises over the week when training three times the upper body um, or is it better to focus on the main exercise and should I train should I have my training the same the whole week um, so like the question and he'd, he'd rephrased it previously about um can he train rings and bars on the same day or should they always be on separate days so kick us off tim yes next question <laughs> <laughs> give us a bit well see so, um you're saying you can't use the rings and the bar on the same day no you i was thinking about this this question on the way today's back garden boudoir and it's uh, I'm roasting, by the way. Yes, well, I think I'm getting burnt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it really, de it massively depends. Like, yes, no, sometimes, sometimes not. Like, people have written whole textbooks about programming. It's the real art side of, of what we do as strength and conditioning coaches. There isn't a golden ticket, a lucky yeah. egg. This is the perfect training program. And it's difficult for us to kind of address some of these sorts of questions that come in because it, I know absolutely nothing about people's training background, people's lifestyle, people's work commitments, their ability to train, where they train, what equipment they've got, what they want to achieve and all yeah. this sort of stuff. So it just becomes this really difficult thing to answer and, and that's why people work with professionals like us to yeah. actually write programs and take some of that complication out of them because we, we've got the skills and experience to be able to put these different components together. But my upshot of this is, is, is a lot of people get this question or get this kind of, um, this idea the wrong way around. Is it's can I do this? Well, yeah, you can do it, whatever you want. Like, but what do you want out of it? Yeah. So rather than starting with the, what can I do? My response is you need to start with, well, what are you trying to achieve? Because yeah. then that very much determines how you're gonna spend time. So if I know what you wanna do, say you wanna do a ring muscle up, do I think you should be training on a bar? Well, if you've only got one session a week, then no, like just spend time on the rings. Yeah. If you're trying to achieve two different things or you're trying to just get basic strength, can I use bar and rings? Yeah, go for it. Like if it's just global strength, then yeah, crack on. But I'm, I'm sorry yeah, if yeah. I feel like I'm on my soapbox about this one, but it's a really difficult yeah. one for us to answer um, with, with, without kind of full picture understanding. And my last point before I let Dave jump yeah. in on this is, is that is why our framework is so good in that if we, we start with the, with the focus towards a movement, and that could be just capacity strength as part of a muscle up or as part of a back lever. But some of what you're talking about is that is it applied strength, which is specific towards a movement. So therefore, the, uh, what, you're, what you're training for needs to be very closely to, to match the demands of what that exercise is. Or is it just global strength? That's our capacity strength kind of stuff. Is it a movement pattern? So you're looking for some skill acquisition. And, and these are all are important parts of learning calisthenics, but they fit into a program structure, which is what we've done yeah. with our framework I don't know what you yeah. I, I'm that, sorry I, I, I yeah no I, like I, I completely agree with Tim um, I guess obviously but um, the 
the answer being like, yeah, you can use rings and bow in the same session, or yeah, actually you, you could use them separately and there's and there'd be reasons and benefits to doing either. What's what what I want to focus on is what Tim touched on is that what's the most important thing is you understand what you're getting out of it and why you want to use the rings. Like what is the difference between doing dips on rings and dips on the bars? Why do you find dips on the rings harder? Because the rings are unstable and your shoulders have got to provide some of that stability. So you will start to understand what you're getting out of the exercise rather than just choosing something because you've seen someone else doing yeah. it. Like you need to know what are your goals, what are you working towards? And then what training modality or what, th what exercise am I going to start to use to make sure I get what I want? So if I'm wanting to work like max strength and I'm doing some weighted, I'll use dips as an example, it's a good, mm. a good one to use. I might, I'm going to go on the bar and I'm going to go heavy with additional weight around my waist with a weight belt because I know I'm getting like ma maximal force production and, and that max strength. Whereas if I want to work on like my shoulder stability because I feel like in my um, handstands, for instance, I just don't feel like quite stable, that it's quite difficult for me then I choose to do my dips on the rings because I'm getting more shoulder stability. I won't be able to do quite as many reps and I might not be able to do uh, add any additional weight and it's hard enough for me to do that. Um, and then it starts to link in with the number of reps and sets that I'm yeah. going to be doing. Then. But getting knowing what you're training for and why you're training for that is the most important thing rather, rather than are you doing the right things on the right days mm. in my book? I think the, the other thing is that you'll notice that the content that we put out is a, is a bit different to a lot of calisthenic stuff that's on the internet. So we're writing our um, muscle up book, which is coming out soon. And the, the way that you're, when you, when you read it, the, the way that you, you see that we've presented the information is, is way different. Like we've, Dave and I have spoken we should, about before, well, we should put out a 12 week program or a six week program. But just as a professional from my integrity about the information that we're putting out, I find it really difficult to do because it could fall into the hands of anybody who's not geared up and it's not yeah. going to work for. And we've, we work in, in Paralympic sports, so for the last nearly 10 years, what we've done is written specific programs to get specific adaptation. We've never yeah. done something which is just, well, I don't know, this program will be right for you, you're a 100 meter run, just do this one. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. Yeah, um, yeah just on, like, on that, like when, when we say to an athlete, you should ask, it, like if you want to, ask us, like, uh, you could pick any exercise on your program and say why am I doing that and we should have an answer and if we haven't got an answer then then the, take, the, it, out, right? take it out or why is yeah. it in there and so you should do the same yourself like why am I doing ring dips today why am mm. I doing X today like you should know why you are doing the things you're doing and, and and you know if you're working on your own like question yourself and have a make sure you've got a reason and a rationale for what you're doing um, and if you need some help with that, then have been ask us and we'll get in contact yeah. with you. Yeah, and that's the thing that that's why the ebooks are so different. Is that we're taking the stance that yes, we, we are the school of calisthenics, but we, we genuinely believe in educating people so that you can make your own decisions around training. So when you read the information, now the, it's put forward in a way which hopefully means that you can understand and learn the principles yeah. more. So then you can actually the, the dream for me would be not to provide you a, a, a 10, 12 week training program, is for you to be able to sit down with a blank piece of paper and use the information that we've given you to use a different um, theory behind why we might yeah. do apply strength versus capacity strength and actually write your own program. Because if, I, if, we, if, we, you, if you bought a program from us for, for 10 weeks and then it runs out and you go, okay. What, yeah, what, what, what do you do now? now? I'm interested in your long-term training, your long-term progression, calisthenics as a lifestyle type of training if you want it to be for, for 20, 30, 40 years. Yeah. But to do that, we want to invest in you so that you actually understand why you're doing what you're doing yeah and we um, we, and like we're in contact and getting contact with people that do buy some of the ebooks and i've had people not many because I, I offer it but they don't they don't take it up and we just say like if you need any help or anything just let us know and i had a couple of people actually write out a program send it and say what do you think of this and and it's amazing mm. to see that somebody taking what we've done there was yeah. a guy who wrote like himself an eight week block two four week mesocycles and they went and uh and he and he planned out a progressive like thing for his handstand training. Um, and it was cool to see, and it was nice to be able to like give him the sort of thumbs up of like, yes, you've got that right. Yeah. Now the hard work starts, and you're actually going away and yeah. actually doing the training. And that's one of the benefits. We have a virtual classroom on hosted by a, a team called Edify, and that's that's a platform where where we can engage with people a little bit and, and genuinely providing co interactive coaching support based on videos, and people can post up programs and we can look at them. Yeah. So that support's there. If you're interested in that, you can jump in and, and you can check that out as well. But that's a really long answer. I think we've probably yeah, been going about 10 minutes already. <laughs> what it's the such a big, we could do the whole... That, that, Similar rings. Might as well one question. But the answer was yes and no yeah. and maybe. But understand, the, the highlights is understand what it is you're doing. Yeah. And question why you're doing something. Yeah, if you can't answer it, 
than <laughs> Mark Williamson. Ah, oh, Mark. Um, we met Mark at the workshop in Harpenden. Okay, so I was I wondered whether it was the snooker player. Was that Williams? Anyway. Possibly. Hi, Tim and Dave. Hi, Mark. Uh, loving all your work. There you, go. you can see you're why on. I'm answering his question. You're on. Um, I'm interested to know, uh, this is a great question. I have actually replied to this. Yeah, yeah but I wanted, to, I wanted to answer this. I thought we could go into a little bit of detail. So I th I've got some interesting thoughts. I'm interested to know, why are you two um, accomplished athletes? Double compliment. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure it's, <laughs> not sure it's true. Um, we uh, like even I've uh, often referred to ourselves as a couple of pirates. Yeah. <laughs> so. And poor man gymnastics <laughs> and retired. Anyway, right. So, um, why well, a couple of accomplished athletes like you uh, have such different areas of expertise, e.g., um, Tim, head of human, uh, head of handstands, Jacko, head of human flags. Um, is it simply which areas you focus more time on individually or something more? You kick off on this one. Um, so, the thing I. Th so. Yes, probably a bit. There's a bit of like focusing time on, and uh, definitely, and it's like what you then like interested in. When I started, like I was mad keen to get a human flag. I just thought it was one of those things that looks flipping cool, and I knew that when I'd go on holiday, holiday <laughs> photos would never look the same again. It was more of a which I then started when I was thinking about this. When I saw this question, I was thinking, actually, does that tell us something a bit more um, about our personalities a little bit? In the um, particularly the way Tim does a handstand, it's so graceful and sort of really fits in that sort of calisthenics, that calisthenics beauty and strength. Um, <laughs> no, but, but, but whereas how I started trying yeah, to do a handstand, yeah. that to start again was like just kicking up and it looked flipping awful. And, and then it made me think, well, the flag thing's very much like a show off thing and a bit of a peacocking <laughs> thing. And I was like, then is that, is that what I'm like? Um, probably somebody else can answer that rather than me. But, um, Certainly down, I think it tells a little bit of story, it tells you a little bit about our personalities, maybe. Um, but in terms of getting good at one or the other, then yes, definitely time. I'm sure I've spent more time doing a human flag. Um, I'm gonna be putting out some human flag pull-ups soon, which I've now cracked. Um, and Tim spent a lot more time doing handstands. It is time on task, you get what you train for. You don't get, you don't get good at handstands because you just want to or you think about mm. doing them. You've got, you've got to actually spend some time doing that stuff. And it's the same for the flag. You've got to spend time doing it. Any time, like, I don't do something for a while, particularly like a back lever or something that might yeah. go off the radar for a bit. You don't train it for a bit. And then we're teaching at a workshop and you're like, oh, crack, I better make sure my back lever's looking all right <laughs> yeah. for the demo. And you're like, it can feel like a struggle, even if you see us and go, oh, that looks easy. Like, every time, I don't think there's anything I do that feels easy, ever. Um, that's just the yeah. reality of it. The calisthenics, you're spinning a lot of plates the whole time, so it is yeah. really, really difficult to keep. If anyone sits down and goes, well, well, I've got muscle up, back lever, front lever, flag, flipping planche, whatever else, that perfect all the time, like fair play. You've got more training time than what I've got. Yeah. Um, and it's recovery time. I struggled to recover between my sessions. Yeah, that's my true. biggest problem. So if, if, I'll jump in on that with the, for me with the handstands, it started off, I'll I, I give you a little bit of background of the story. So. My wife is, a, is South African and they've got a family have got a place in, in a town called Hermanus and it over their, their deck overlooks the ocean. So they're on holiday one time and I didn't really want to go to the gym in town, I wanted to train outside so, outside, so I said, right, I'm going to give this calisthenics thing a go. And this was literally my first kind of starting point in. And I thought, I'm going to learn to handstand. That looks like yeah. a cool thing to do. And I'd also had two shoulder surgeries, multiple dislocations. And I'd done all the physio stuff in the book and none of it words it kept on I kept on having problems so in my mind this was very early days before I really kind of started to investigate how the scientific theories and principles of training might apply to calisthenics and injury rehabilitation um, I kind of felt like if I could do a handstand then that would mean that my shoulders were stable that was like the ultimate kind of uh, litmus test for me so I started on with it and I'm, I'm a perfectionist by heart like really? painfully sometimes so like <laughs> Yeah, Dave, Dave like is now laughing. Is laughing because I probably regularly annoy him because I'm I'm, I'm quite particular. But it's good. It's one of the reasons why our team works because everyone brings something different. Yeah. To the party. So for me to do a handstand was never going to be about can I just kick up into it. It was like it's not a handstand until I can control it into a freestanding handstand from a tuck position or, or a, a frog stand. It's not. I'm not good enough until I can do a handstand push up. And now what I've just kind of finished working on really is it's not good enough until it's perfect alignment where I could go to the Olympics and I could get some decent scores. If only for a handstand, I don't know whether that'll get me to the final round or, or a medal, but that's kind of what I was aiming for. The is just a <laughs> yeah. handstand. That's it, finished. Yeah. Gone. A but, short soundtrack. Yeah, it would be, yeah. And I wouldn't have to do any prancing around in between <laughs> yeah. either. I literally could walk on, do it and get off. Um, 
<laughs> but I loved it. I, I fell, in, I fell in, in love with hand balancing exercises, the control that I get from it, what it does for my shoulders, the feeling, like it's, and, and that's evolved into planches and all sorts of stuff. And it's just, I think the upshot is why, we, why, do we, why is Dave can absolutely smash uh, a human flag and, and why is my handstand practice a little bit more maybe kind of further down the line is it's just where I've spent time like you're yeah. dead right about that like I, I can do a human flag but I kind of I've, for me I've ticked that box it's yeah. kind of they, where Dave wants to go to hand, um, human flag pull-ups maybe at some point but it's not a priority for me I, I, yeah. I enjoy the art and the practice of handstands um, and it gives me a nice title and my job title at the School of Calisthenics is Head of Exercise Science and Handstands I think that's a cool cool job title um you did give yourself that title yeah <laughs> but surely that's the that's the benefit of having your own school <laughs> i call okay. myself whatever i might best my house next week <laughs> have we had a plunge before long <laughs> uh uh this next one isn't a question uh more of a statement um, but i thought i'd read it out uh, from gerardo best q a ever guys so thanks <laughs> that was for q a number five moving on um uh there's a different Gerardo Nava. So we got two Ger Gerardos. This is a different Gerardo, I promise you. Um, he starts with, good job, guys. The way you explain the exercise is great. Um, so, yeah, happy. Like, you know, yeah. He's happy. So you can see why we're asking. There's more coming on this question, right? That's not it. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Right. yeah. So it's just, just all the... <laughs> That's going to be awkward. Thanks. Um, sorry. How many reps and steps should I do in a workout? Um, can I work out every day? Do you sell your black polo shirt? Oof. We haven't got the black ones on today, have we? Let me start with reps and sets. Too hot for a black polo today. Yeah, and we've not worn the red for a while. I missed the red. Oh, just uh, like on the apparel, um, we're working with a company in Nottingham to um, design. We had some design, first sort of draft of designs come through today, actually. Um, and so probably by the time this video goes out, we're going to be close, hopefully, to having some stuff on our site to be able to, to sell you guys. So um, look out for that. Um, reps and sets. My head is spinning with this because we, I've written a whole section in the Muscle Up book about this, and it's uh, how many reps and sets should we be doing a workout? And this more is, than one. More than one. This works. This actually fits in really beautifully with the, the first question, mm. which means I'm going to be painfully ambiguous with my answer. Well, it depends what you want. It depends what you want. So roughly, if you want to get max increased maximal strength, we're going to work lower rep ranges, one to five, but that has to be then with a heavy load. So we need to be hitting. Um, say let's say five reps at 85 87 percent one rep max to have the percentage of how much you can do for one repetition if you want more endurance you're going to be hitting 10 to 20 potentially upwards if you want to go super endurance if you want some more hypertrophy increase in muscle mass which again is a probably a different question uh, mm -hmm. around calisthenics we're going to be hitting six to tens and the reps and sets with those or the sets that are going to go with those are, are going to be sort of i don't know with three to six depending on, on what you're trying to work on yeah. But it, again, it, it comes back to this idea of it, it just depends what you want. Like, Can I give an example? Go. I've got a really good, so my, um, my old S&C coach who, uh, when I was at Nottingham, uh, awesome guy, French guy, um, as French guys go, like tell, tell relatively essential. Yeah, I'm going, out. going to, oh. Joe Brun, he's currently um, S&C out in, out in France, in rugby. And he, um, <laughs> he had a beautiful way of explaining things. He was like, if you want to get like you could be, so this comes in reps and sets and like how demanding an exercise is. So you could do the washing up. If you want big arms, you could do the washing up all day, every day. You're never going to get big arms from doing that. Is that because plates don't weigh very much? Exactly. Well, the plates, and the, and plates in the gym might do. Yeah. But yeah. And, then, and you're doing loads of repetitions and working really hard, but you're never going to build massive muscle because there's, there's no need for that adaptation for, for adding on either strength or... Uh, muscle size because you're strong enough to do the washing up already exactly um, whereas I'm currently um, trying to work on a one arm chin up and um, I'm literally day one of my one arm pull up training was three sets of one eccentric on each side um, and that was it yeah and that was flipping more than enough and I'm just building that up slowly but I'm going to stay in that one to five rep range three to five sets and just build up very, very slowly because I'm trying to get a maximal strength adaptation. I'm not going to put, um, you know, I could do it like have a rope next to me and a band around my feet and, and do 20 reps on one arm, but it's not going to give me the strength, like the maximal strength adaptation that I want. So hopefully that gives a little bit of, yeah, that gives some context to that. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, absolutely. I think it's um, 
we put quite a bit of some blogs that we can uh, you can go back and read of ours, and maybe we could we'll put some in the in the information below so you can go and click and read those and understanding we call all that acute variables. So it's not just reps and sets. You've got to throw in reps, sets, uh, intensity or percentage one RM that you're going to try and train at. You've got to throw in the tempo or the speed at which you're training, and then you've also got to consider your rest period. Those five things all blend together to give you specific adaptations and yeah. we're, we again we, we mentioned before about the education side of stuff it's really important that we we tell you about this sort of stuff so that you can then start to make decisions because I want you to maximize the amount of training opportunities that you've got we're all everyone's busy these days so when you go in the gym if you know if you know what you're trying to do reps and sets no, wise, Seth. Yeah, they're the coach. Um, then you can go in there you can actually spend that time taking you in a direction that you want to go in yeah um, so again yeah Let's do that there because I could probably go on. Yeah, for, we'll put a link in. Um, yeah, read to that the blog, blog that's a lot of on stuff that. Yeah. There. Um, so the final question, Tim, go on, question uh, master. comes from Wolfie Dragon. Great. Name. I hope that is your real, actual name. <laughs> yeah. um, well done to you, sir. Um, he says, "Hey guys, good video. This is from um, the, Q, the last Q and A, um, and he's been working on. Well, he's 46 years old now." So Same age as you, nearly. No. <laughs> 35. I was 35 the other week. Like um, tough paper out. No, very tough. That's what a lot of people said. It's surprising. It's been hard. Um, it's all those... In Radcliffe on Trent, so a lot of people have the Sunday Times and the Telegraph. Heavy all papers, big aren't they? Yeah, I mean, you're looking at like this. I had like three or four bags on a Sunday. Do you think you... like We, we, talked, about we, wash, the... <laughs> we talked about washing up before. Did you get a strength adaptation from Karen News? I think I had a wonky... I had like a wonky <laughs> yeah. bag. Probably why you shot yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. No, that was because some massive like hammered me when I was playing rugby. Um, right, so he's 46, and we're just saying well done for him. Um, he's doing five pull-ups with a weighted vest. It'd be interesting to know how what size yep. a weighted vest, but normally I'm, I'd guess it's ten, maybe like five, ten, ten, is, ten. Five, yeah. ten is a normal. Set. But anyway, so he wants to. Uh, he's, he's not sure about working on his. Uh, he wants to build up to do a muscle-up, and he thinks he needs to work a little bit more on his uh, pull-up technique. Um, which is the first thing to touch on. And then also, um, does he need to work time and attention for his pull-ups to build up strength as well as building some muscle mass? Um, can I so, go pull-up technique first? Okay, I was just going to... Well, can I just... I'm just going to go first that pull-up technique compared to your the movement for your muscle-up is going to be different. I'm sure Tim's going to touch yeah. upon that. Um, and then building strength and mass. Like, this comes right back to the beginning. Like, understanding what we want to do. If you're going to want to build mass and make yourself bigger... Like that's then you making it harder for you to then pull up and get above mm. the bar. So it's like, what do you want? Do you want to be able to do a muscle up or do you just want to look jacked in a t-shirt? Um, Both. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have my cake and eat it. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Exhibit A. Um, anyway, Tim, shed some uh, light on the muscle up. Yeah, Tim, so, with a lot of work going on. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, there's a Stuff lot of in thoughts there. in my head at the moment um, about this. Share them. Not all of them. Too much. No. Too much. Just the ones related to the question. Um, pull up technique. Jacko's right in that the technique is slightly different because you're going to start to move at a different angle. But the most important thing about that is actually that you can maintain midline or midsection tension. You, when we're doing the must up, you, you have to start to move from a position and you're going to take all of your body weight up above the bar whilst you're putting down a, a considerable amount of force. Now, when we see people doing pull ups in the gym and, and we, we're talking to people about them, a lot of the time we see this arch in the back, the, the midsection breaks, and we're starting to kind of not get into particularly good positions. Every time we do that, we're losing midsection tension. And what I want is the midsection locked in, abs on tight, closed rib cage down. So that you can, I'm not gonna hear you. No, I'm doing it. No, I don't want to. No, I did it. All right, so that you can then. We saw me do it. Start to transfer that force. Every time we lose control of the midsection, force leaks out the side. We call that an energy leak. Mm -hmm. So making sure that when you're doing pull ups, you're actually being super strict. And that's one of the things about adding more weight. People go, oh, I've got 20 kilo pull up, but it looks absolutely yeah. good. And I think, can I just, on that, just a couple of things. Big thing, biggest one for me for your pull up is rather than thinking about trying to get your chin above the bar, which is the end point that you want to get, trying to pull your chin up, what you'll start to do is you'll lose control of your shoulder or the head of that humerus and get into some nasty positions. Um, so thinking about driving my elbow down to my side gives me the same end result. If I get my elbow down to my side, my chin goes above the mm. bar, but I then keep the shot, I have a better chance of keeping the shoulder in a better position here rather than back there. Yeah. And a lot of the time we'll lose that midsection 
because you you know you've got to try and keep the shoulders in a decent position, but you lack that um, retraction of the shoulder blade. So to give you that false sense, we arch the lower back and then you feel like you're getting the shoulders back. But what you might actually be doing is coming forward here and you've got lost complete control of that, but your mm. brain just thinks it's doing the job you're wanting to do. So elbows down to the sides, that will get your chin above the bar rather than trying to actually get your chin above yeah. the bar. And I think with the, the building the strength with the weight vest is it's actually a great tool if you've got like some decent number of pull-ups in, in the bag. But the real thing my test for you would do is to kind of work out where you need to spend a bit more time is can you do a high pull up like if you pull up from a dead hang position as high as you can how far above that bar can you get and if you're literally still just getting the chin over then it's worth starting to think about doing a bit more explosive training and we yeah. put a video about this um, which we'll link in below yeah and you can go back and watch it because we did a whole thing about training for speed and power as part of a muscle rather than just being um the just rather just be like can i get do enough pull-ups and all of a sudden I'm going to get a muscle-up because I can do 12 and that's a magic number which means you can muscle-up. Yeah, there's quite a lot of people within the sort of realms of calisthenics and obviously the more pull-ups you can do, the chances are you're going to be, have a better chance of um, doing a muscle-up. But like, um, there was a guy that went to Rio Paralympics, Crispy, who mm. could do 20, 20 pull-ups, or no, 23 pull-ups in a row, I think he told me, but couldn't do a muscle-up. Yeah. And I just did a muscle-up in front of him to just ignore, uh, annoy him because I can't do 23 pull-ups in a row, not a chance. Yeah. But it's a different it's a slightly different scale like say that's that speed element the, mm. the video is called why you can't um why you can't muscle up yeah because we're just missing that speed element and just from me like generally when i see people in the gym um coming from like a professional sports background where my job as a fullback or winger in rugby was to be fast so we had to do loads of speed training and power training and generally that's difficult for the upper body anyway and most people in the gym in normal day-to-day -day training we do is three sets of 10 and we do a nice controlled tempo. We don't actually do any speed work. We don't yeah. know how to train speed effectively. Um, even lower body stuff, some people might do the odd box jump, but they mm. do them really slow and controlled. I've seen someone doing a depth jump the other day and spent about 10 minutes on the floor. <laughs> and it's just like understanding what adaptation you want. It goes back to the first quiz. Good, this is working out. Go back to well the first quiz. What are you trying to get out of it? Yeah. Um, and okay. for the muscle up, we do need that speed. The time's going to touch on the time on attention question as well. Again, like that fits in quite well. If someone said to me, I'm going to increase time on attention during my training, that for me tells me that you're going to start training slower because you're going to do your reps at a four second eccentric. You might pull on the concentric phase and way up a little bit slower. So again, just to reiterate what Dave says, you get what you're training for. So if you're training slow, you're going to get slow. However, if you need to build some strength because you can't get that high pull up position, then bigger muscle, which is a useful um, thing to work towards if you're going to increase your time on attention, bigger muscles produce more force. So it might be that you need to do a block of that kind of work to yeah. get basic strength and then you can bolt on your speed. If you're struggling with the basic strength, but you're trying to train fast, well, you haven't got the force to be able to get the velocity kind of um, relationship that you need. So just get strong and yeah. then train speed. Or do on separate days. Again, it makes yeah, it all I'm back into throw, it. Yeah, I'll <laughs> throw a span in the works that you might feel that you, or you've worked out that actually I'm really weak at the top position of my, of my pull-up and therefore like the transition is difficult. And you might do some time attention isometrics yeah. at the top in that top hole position, literally not just hanging there, like trying almost to get over the bar for like 10 seconds, just hanging out there, 10 seconds, five, six sets, mm. um, where you are working time attention, but specifically for the outcome that you want towards that muscle up, rather than just, I've heard time attention is a good thing to try and do, I'm gonna just go ahead and do a load of. Yeah, one thing I've done is actually work those high pull ups and then try and catch it at the top. And even if it's just two seconds at yeah. the top, every time you're doing that, so you might do 10 reps or you might be able to get six or whatever. If you can hang there for a couple of seconds and just really kind of focus on cranking the power down to try and hold that top yeah. position, it might be eight seconds per set. And that's going to add up over time. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's an easy way to combine a couple of things together. Yeah. But that's you knowing what you want to get out of that exercise yes. for that training. Yeah, yeah. Um, but check when the muscle up book comes out, too much, <laughs> too much knowledge in there. But it's going to be good. I hope you guys enjoy it because it's a... Uh, there's a lot of scientific rationale behind why we're doing what we're doing in that movement, which yeah. is, it's very different to us. We're trying, it's got rings and bar muscle-ups in. Yeah. We're trying to cover um, absolutely everything in there so that you don't have to go. Some might say it's the most comprehensive muscle-up resource we'll available see. We'll, 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 that, we'll see what the reviews some, say when they come out. Some people. Um, <laughs> okay, so that's it. Thanks for watching and listening if you've made it all the way to the end. Uh, Q&A number six. Uh, if you have got any questions, make sure you comment in those below. If you haven't yet subscribed, that's up there by Tim Z. If you haven't got our free beginner's guide, that is a must because it's free. So you've got nothing to lose. That's down. If it's free, it must be good. There. And then if you haven't, um, we'll move out of the way. If you haven't uh, got last week's Q&A or seen that, that's 
over there. So until next time, class dismissed. <laughs>